All right, everyone, really excited to be here. I've got the beautiful Miranda here, who is the star of the show. Um, but as always, I've just been trying to share my screen and it doesn't want to work. So we're going to get the uh, presentation up and running. Um, bear with me as I do that and uh, we'll get into it. I'm super excited for this tonight. I really wanted to create something for you that we've had a lot of masterclasses and I didn't want anything else to be, you know, I, I wanted something to integrate, to kind of mesh things together. I would be thinking right by now, you're feeling better. You've got some protocols in place. You've identified what that might be that you need to do. And then this is really, I think, a, such a treat because we can get the inside out all into all happening. And then we want to look at the outside in. And I've been watching the marketing for, look at us go, here we go. I've been looking at the marketing for um, that new show, Undressed. And um, I just am loving what I'm seeing because that whole idea, change your clothes and change your life. I'm like, yes, this is exactly what we're going for. So I'm really delighted to be able to, um, to jump into this with you tonight and, um, and really, you know, help you to integrate something else and, and something else that you might not have thought of. Um, for anyone that's new around here, I'm Nat. Hi. Um, and um, I am a health practitioner. I've been in the industry for 18 years um, and I just love helping women understand their bodies simply so that they can make really great choices for their long-term health. We're joined by Miranda and Miranda, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, I don't know that I could even do you justice, so go ahead. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I've been in the industry for 20 years in all facets of fashion, all the way from wholesale to merchandising to um, managing to styling. And throughout my career, I've styled, yeah, I was trying to think about how many and I, it would be like thousands and thousands and thousands of men and women. Um, and then through COVID and the lockdown, I started doing virtual styling and I did my first virtual style session with somebody in New Zealand like six months ago, which was just out of this world. Um, and then um, I'm also a bra fit specialist and just started doing mummy modeling because I'm a mummy, I'm 47. Um, and I used to do it when I was much younger and I'm just trying to diversify. Nah. Love it. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Well, this is one thing I think we've learned over the last little while is that this is part of what we need to do. Yeah. So let's get into the masterclass because I think a lot of uh, women can identify with the fact that they've, they've, they've not necessarily changed much. Maybe that's part of the challenge is that we haven't changed much and we're still kind of living a way that maybe doesn't actually suit our style anymore and our styles evolved. Um, but also maybe your hormones have. And I think that's another layer to things. Uh, that that when it comes to talking about style specifically and pheromones and who we are and what we put out there, things might have changed and you just haven't caught up yet. And that can be really confronting because, you know, you might be sitting there going, well, I don't know who I really am anymore and I don't know how to find her and I don't know what works for me anymore. And, and so what I really want to do is help you just to really quickly piece together before I, I hand it over to Miranda. I want to help you to piece together how your cycle can also influence part of how you're feeling and, and how this might be applicable to how you show up e each and every day. So some of us might not have a menstrual cycle anymore. Let me tell you, you're still cycling. I was speaking with one of the girls at work today and she's like, I might be in menopause or post menopause, but she's like, I'm telling you now things still cycle. And, and yes, they do. And you might notice how you're feeling, your moods might cycle, you might notice that certain phases that you feel puffy or bloated or whatever that might be. So phases of the cycle, I don't think this is revolutionary to anyone. But the way I like to teach these is through the seasons. So the menstrual phase, obviously, when we've got our period, is very reflective of winter, it's a time where we are inward, we are, um, you know, we're shedding our lining, we are preparing for the month ahead. And so, you know, the winter phase is very much like that, where we are very 
very inward and we're spending time just nurturing ourselves. The follicular phase, which is when we start to um, notice estrogen starts, to, well, not notice, estrogen starts to rise. You might notice that you start to feel like you've got a little bit of a spring in your step. Think this is usually the phase where people are like, this is where I feel my best. This and ovulation, I feel really good. Like, productive get stuff done this is spring this is where we're moving into this time where there's new growth obviously you're growing your lining that's where the new growth comes from because you've just shed it um and we definitely do have this spring in our step as we move into the ovulation window which is like summer um it's when we want to go out and be social we want to meet people we get a testosterone surge it makes us there's this day or there's about three or four days in your cycle where you actually, I hope that you look in the mirror and you're like, huh, I look good today. And it's usually because your body is pretty much setting you up to fall pregnant in any moment of the day, any moment of the cycle and any moment of the day, whether you like it or not, that's what it's doing. Um, and then we come down the other side into the luteal phase, which shouldn't feel terrible. Sure. You might have a couple of days right before the period arrives where you're like, hmm, not feeling my best self, but also you, it's not it's not horrible either. Um, and then we move through the cycles again. So I just want to explain these because I feel like this is really powerful. If you can understand the phases and what's also happening in terms of your overall vibe and demeanor. So the menstrual phase, I think we all can understand. This is where I'd want to. I just want to feel cozy. You know, I want to wear the tracky pants and I want to have something loose around my waist. And the overall vibe we've put here is restful, soft, intuitive and reflective. So I would imagine, and Miranda can elaborate on this more, but this is where I'd want, uh, you know, I've invested in recently some pieces that are, I love, I'm a mad for a set. Give me a set of anything because a set I can also, I do a lot of traveling and a set is brilliant because I can put my pants, I can wear the set the top and the bottom that match, but I can also then put um, a different top or a singlet with the pants and vice versa, jeans with the top. So it's like three outfits in one and, and in, you know, very easily. But but I've just recently bought um, a silk set that looks like pyjamas. I would want to wear that on this day. This is exactly when, and it's still... It's not daggy at all. It's actually beautiful to wear. So really embracing that feminine um, energy that comes through with the menstrual phase and really just listening and leaning into that. I wouldn't feel great wearing a tight pair of jeans on my first day of my cycle. Like, why would I actually go and do that? Um, we're often in the lead up to the period as well. We're often feeling a bit bloated and I'll explain that in a second. So there are definitely days where we don't want to do that. Now, when we move into the follicular phase, so this is what I said before, when, you know, your egg starts to mature and the little follicles on your ovaries are there. And if this was a season, this would be spring. And we're really, the overall vibe here is clarity. You're like you come out of, you come out of hibernation and you're like, I've got goals and I'm setting those goals. And now I'm going to start to like put them on my list in preparation to kick those goals and this is where we notice you know our energy starts to increase we can um if you've watched the um the weight loss masterclass, we talk about training around this and being able to do a little bit more with our exercise and having more energy and the overall vibe is optimistic so this is where i'd start to introduce things that make me or that are reflective of this whether it's some more color or whatever that might look like um also I notice, and I'm, I wonder if you've noticed this too, that at certain phases of my cycle, even my skin throws off different color tones. So this is also when I feel like I'm a bit more brighter. I'm definitely less red and blotchy. Um, my skin is clearer. And as I move into that ovulation phase that I was speaking about before, I, where I feel good and I've got this testosterone surge, this is where everything becomes really bright. Eyes are white. Like I feel, I feel really good. Um, obviously at ovulation, we release the egg from the ovary. We are fertile. Your body's on a raid on a war path to find a, a suitable partner, whether you like it or not. And, and again, this season is summer. So the overall vibe is confident, flirty, social, high energy, like I'd want to put on the little dress with the heels and, and have a good time. And I'd feel good doing that. We typically do not feel if our hormones are balanced. And if this is not you, then there's plenty of other masterclasses to go back and figure out what's going on. But this is where we are generally um, the least 
puffy, the least bloated, the like we're the opposite of all of those. We feel really good at this point in time. So you can get away with the more um, the more fitted clothing at this time that you don't have to worry about feeling uncomfortable. This is where we feel probably the most comfort throughout the whole cycle. And this phase we've put here 11 to 16, but you know, it, it give or take a few days as well. So this is really where you want to go and kick your goals and execute tasks and get it done and tick all those things off your list. And I, I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than a good um, power suit to go and do that to feel like I'm like boss lady. This is when I get to dress up and be boss lady as well. Um, my luteal phase or our luteal phase is then kind of like the downside of that. It's moving into autumn. Autumn's not terrible. None of the seasons are terrible. It's just embracing them and working with them rather than against them. So, you know, the, um, the uterine lining, if, it's, if conception doesn't take place, it's continuing to thicken, it's getting ready to be shed again. Obviously, that's moving into autumn. And we can be a little bit more irritable as we definitely lead into sort of day 25, 26. We want to go inward. We're a bit more emotional. This is the time where I give myself permission to rest a little bit more, to eat a little bit more, to sleep a little bit more. Like I just need a little bit more nurturing. And I think my style is also representative of that if I can lean into that as well. This is also when I, especially the lead up to my period, I'm flushed because progesterone's rising. It's, it's a warming hormone. I start to look red in the face. I wouldn't wear personally something that was red when I feel flushed already. So I do love these colors, orange and red, and I've embraced a lot more of these colors, but I definitely wouldn't feel good in them on these days. And, and it's often the days where I put things on and I take them off again. I feel like we all have those days where you put something and you're like, nah, nah, and you put something in, mm, nah. And so I, I know that, that, you know, more block colors definitely are better for me at this time. And I definitely embrace more black at this time because it just makes me, it just suits the way I'm feeling. It's not in a bad way. Um, I love wearing black. <laughs> so I want you to be able to lean into these phases to help you to then also make decisions based on how you're feeling and where you are in your cycle, which adds another layer to how you show up. And I think it's really nice because here's the thing. It doesn't mean you can't wear something outside of that on those days. That's not what I'm saying at all. And Miranda can speak more to this, but to me, what it means is I can have an understanding of where I'm at. And if something doesn't make sense, I can make it make sense. Um, you know, once I know also once upon a time when I was in my late luteal phase and I'd try and get stuff done and I'd try and be creative, I am not creative in this phase. Therefore, my I can't even be creative in what I'm wearing. It's just this is where go-to items are really great as well. And so once I know that about myself, all I can, all, what the easiest thing for me to do is just give myself space to be like that because I know it's only temporary. I know it's only three or four days that, or not even, maybe two days that I feel like that for, and it's not forever. So once upon a time, I used to think, what is wrong with me? You look terrible. You feel tired. You, 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 you're all flushed in the face. You're bloated. Like what's going on? Now I can lean into it. Now I just know that it's a couple of days. My creativity has gone and I just need to surrender to that. And so I, I think that that's a really useful thing that we can we can do. I just want to also make um, some other quick observations that changes that we can see in the cycle are things like weight fluctuations, insomnia, bloating, puffiness. These things can all make us feel pretty average as well. And so again, if I have um, my go-to things that I know just work, where I don't have to think about it, I know I feel good in it no matter what, that would be my, my silk set um then life just gets easier and I don't have to sit there and dedicate half an hour every morning and then be flustered by the time I walk out the door one of the things we've been talking about in the preparation for this master class is how you can leave and I just imagine everyone closing the front door and walking out with like with a bit of swagger because all of a sudden they understand themselves that's what I want for everybody it's like I want you to have your swagger back I want you to know that it's good, feel that it's good, feel happy, feel healthy, feel vibrant and bring your best self. And on the days that you know that that's not necessarily going to be how you feel, you can still feel good knowing that you've got these 
reasons and understanding and go-to things that work really well. So I would encourage you to lean into that. Now, the other thing I just want to make sure we understand is that stress can also cause these fluctuations outside of when we would ordinarily expect them to arrive and can make them exponentially worse when they actually are in those phases as well. Stress speeds everything up. And so it accelerates aging, it accelerates. So you can't even imagine what it does if you're in a window where you there's a chance you might be a bit puffy or bloated. It's going to make it even worse. So really just having these little pieces of awareness can really be a game changer in terms of um, how we can work smarter and not harder. Now, the other thing I want to add is for most of us, for this phase of our life, that we are busier than we've ever been. We've got so much on our plate and that's because we've earned the right to actually be busy. And I've spoken about this many times. Busy isn't, it's, it's you get to do a lot of things. We reframe this, remember, you get to do a lot of things and that's not something that has to be stressful or overwhelming. It's just that you get to actually do more than ever and you have the capacity to do more than ever. What in the world is going on here? <laughs> Um, <laughs> so that was funny. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Miranda and Miranda, as we move through these slides and you need to, well, look, Daddy K can come in and actually do it for you by the looks of it. He just yeah. snuck in the well, background. You can do this for me. Oh my gosh, he was needing to grab something. So I'm really excited for Miranda to talk to us. And here's what I want for everybody. All of our masterclasses help you to add another layer for who you uniquely are. And it's not going to be a detailed one-on-one. -on -one. It's the next best thing to a detailed one-on-one. -on -one. And if that's something that you need to pursue, obviously Miranda's here to help you with that. But this is still going to allow you to put yourself into a category so that it makes sense for you and you can make it make sense as well. So I'm going to hand it over to Miranda and let her shine let 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 her shine as she as she so beautifully does and help you to understand your own unique shape and what will work for you okay which slide are we going to first oh we're going to go to this for you here you go oh both curvy okay easy okay so this shape has changed um in a big way really and I think we do have people like the Kardashians to thank for this I know they're a real love hate sort of family I love them I I don't look like them I watched the Kardashians last night yeah I watch it I'm um, obsessed <laughs> I'll, I'll admit to it <laughs> um I think what they've brought back is fuller size models which I think is brilliant because I've always thought, why don't they have like a model and then a fuller size model and then even a petite size model? Because I've got a lot of clients that are petite and they can't see anything. They're just looking at these tall, thin things and they're like, but is that going to look good on me? So that's another thing. Um, but I think it depends on how you feel about your curves. You can be curvy like an hourglass figure, but if you're not feeling comfortable, you're not going to embrace that and you're not going to want to enhance that. So it really depends on the person and the individual. Um, I always look for items that enhance the smallest part. So that small part of the hourglass, so the waist, um, I'd be looking for clothing that enhances your waist. So it doesn't need to be skin tight, as I've always said, like, if any of you follow the podcast, skim, not cling. So just, it can just skim the silhouette. It doesn't have to be like that model, like the diagram right there. Um, wearing smaller prints also tricks the eye that what's underneath is smaller. And obviously wearing a big print, like a big, you can think about something that you've got in your wardrobe and it might be a big polka dot. And then you go, oh, why does that make me look bigger? But it, it's actually tricking the eye to make you, you think what's underneath is bigger. Um, and then, as I said before, if you're comfortable with your beautiful curves, there seems to be a whole positive flow on from that, which I love. 
um, enhance it, enhance your beautiful curves in a figure hugging dress, like go for it. Um, if you, your tummy has a, a little bit of an issue, a blazer that nips right here, like just nips like right at the top of your waist um, and is slightly longer, that will balance out your beautiful curves. And it will also just detract from that tummy. I can't see if there's another one underneath that there's not, is there? No, that's, that's Great. the heavy one. Thank you. Okay, let's keep going. Thanks. And then this is straight up and down. Um, this is what you see on most catwalks and most models. I think everything's changing now a little bit, which is really fantastic. I feel like it's going towards like a normal woman trend, which is brilliant. Um, but this body shape can wear the fuller tops that are in the big exaggerated arms like at Arge and like all those things that um, people that are scared to show their arms. It's a great trend. But we we will get to that a bit later. Um, this is something that you could actually embrace that trend but not everybody can get away with that style. When you're tall and slender, um, you can get away with overwhelming fabrics and shapes because it's not going to overwhelm you. You've got that height to deal with that overwhelm. Um, shoulder pads in blazers will give you a slimmer waistline and they'll trick the eye that your waist is smaller than it is. So we love tricking the eye. That's what my whole business is about. Um, V-neck and halter neck will add a bit of space to your flatter chest area. Um, and then you can also create the illusion of shape with a fuller maxi skirt, um, but also still be aware of the maxi skirt that you don't want it to be overwhelming your frame as well, especially if you are a bit flatter on top. Um, and then belting, as I've spoken with Nat, belting anything in any shape will give you the illusion that you have curves at the waist. So that's a brilliant, easy, very reasonable way to give yourself some shape. Okay, for the lucky top heavies, they don't feel like they're lucky. I think they're lucky because I've never really had that much on top except when breastfeeding. Um, the right bra is super important for this particular body shape because if you're not wearing the right bra, it will shorten your waist. Whereas if you lift everything up properly, not up here, but just to the height and shape that it should be, you can give yourself more of a waist. Um, as I've said before, skim, not cling. So just skimming the silhouette, not clinging. Um, I think skin tight clothing will make you look bigger. So we're all about just balancing out the shape. So if you're top heavy, we want to balance that out by wearing a V-neck or a V-neck will show some of your decolletage and you'll look like you, your eye will be drawn to the eye and the collarbone. Whereas a crew neck, it will look like there's a whole heap of unfortunately, breast coming towards you. It's just like a big thing of, yeah, it's hard to describe that, but that's the only way I can describe it. I know it sounds a bit funny. Um, you can balance it out with a wider leg pant on the bottom. So a, like a fitted top on top, just skim, not cling, and then wide leg pants. It's a really nice balancing act. Um, and then a shirt dress with a singlet underneath. So like similar to what I've got on, I've got a shirt with a cami underneath that will show enough skin, um, but instead it just breaks everything up instead of that big pile of fabric coming towards you. So that's the top heavy. And then we have the beautiful bottom heavy, which is, you know, another thing that has come into the limelight and now it is a thing that people aspire to. Um, so if you're comfortable with it, enhance it. Um, so bottom heavy, 
scoop, scoop neck or v-neck will bring your eye up instead of going down to the bottom half look for items to enhance your smaller part so in, enhance your top half and diminish your bottom half um, you can wear smaller prints as i've said before because it tricks the eye bigger prints makes your eye think it's bigger underneath if you're comfortable in your curves enhance them in a figure hugging dress um, you know it's all about the booty now i think people are even paying for bigger booties and yeah it's gone a bit crazy um if your tummy is an issue once again the same thing just a blazer that nips you in at the waist and then slightly longer to balance out your shape for bottom heavy it has to be the right length it can't be too high because then you're enhancing that bottom half it needs to be just slightly longer but you will know or i can guide you i'm happy to guide you on what length that blazer should be So I think give everybody a minute to actually profile where they are with that because I'm sure everybody's going to have some questions around that. And I think part of what we wanted to do was make it really simple. Now, and you and I had this discussion because I, you, I said, all right, how do we how do we profile people? Yeah. And we came up with those four things. And you're like, well, do you fit into one of those? And I had to stop and think for a second. I'm like, yeah, no, I do. I think... Um, the majority of us can somewhere fit into that. Now, uh, there's going to be combinations of whatever else. Um, and that's fine. I think it's important for us to try and not overthink it as well and kind of just feel like whatever resonates with you first is kind of where you're at. And if you need some help with that, we can talk about it as well. But um, I think that being able to utilise these little little gems um just to have when you're next shopping and when you're next looking for things um can be can just take the guesswork out of things it might mean that you will not buy things that you you know perhaps you're buying that same thing over and over again because you really like the look of it on the model in the store but you get it home and it just doesn't work and Miranda and I were talking about this with I like I really love shirts I have a lot of shirts sometimes they don't look good and I said to Miranda why don't they look good and you said well because some can be very masculine and I was like oh okay makes mm. sense so what we're trying to do here is to really create a scenario where like I've said here is life meeting you at your current vibration perhaps you've identified that you don't know much about your body shape or what it is anymore perhaps you've had children things have changed, perhaps you're getting into perimenopause, things change, like for whatever phase or stage you're at, things do continue to change and evolve. And it is really important, I think, that we're true to ourselves with where we're at with that um, and, and what we need to next do that. And, and this whole, what we're trying to show you here is a way that we can actually change and elevate your vibration so that you actually feel good in your skin, in what you're wearing, because it makes sense to wear it as well. Um, I want you to understand also that one of the things that we're offering and we always offer um, are some little other nuggets that you can take with you. Now, I kept this slide here because a couple of other things that I think really make a difference to how we feel is uh, how we sleep and how we look after ourselves. So I just wanted to quickly touch on this as well, because lack of sleep is going to impact things like our weight and our hormones. And if we're feeling frumpy and we're feeling puffy, um, then that's not going to be great either. So I just want to remind everybody that sleep is something that is very important. And when we are sleep deprived, don't go shopping when you're sleep deprived because you make silly choices. <laughs> um, don't go start and look to look for all of these things um, when you're tired. In fact, I'd encourage you to utilize your cycle and go shopping when you're ovulating because everything looks fabulous when you're ovulating um, within reason. So, um, and not only that, if we're not sleeping and we're tired, we have increased cortisol, we might do silly impulsive things that don't really make sense. I think everyone can relate to that. Like, when you've just gone out and bought some fast fashion item and you've got it home and you're like, what was I thinking? 
I can think of shoes that I did that with. And just remember that sleep is the brain's nutrition and you're aiming for seven to nine hours a night. And I know that we don't all get this, but this is what we're aiming for. Personally, I don't need a lot of sleep. If I was to sleep, if I sleep nine hours, there's something either wrong or I'm about to get my period um, because it's not something that I need. Uh, but th- th- I know that about myself. So it's just a good guide. But I want you to realize that sleep is something that I really want you to pay attention to. And if that's not happening, um, and also making sure that we're getting the right nutrients in. So depending on your constitution, and we're not really going to dive into that, but it's important to understand that you cannot out supplement poor nutrition. And also, are you getting enough water in every day? Just let me remind you of that. Even when I met with Miranda, she made me have a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> there it is there. So, you know, really around two litres a day is really what we're aiming for somewhere around that. We've discussed that in previous masterclasses, but I do want to remind you of that. Now, like we do with all masterclasses, I also want to make you aware of the supplements that we have on offer and we have a feel good bundle. This is just a general support. So if we had um, other issues and, and uh, you know, some of the other classes, it's been very specific. This is just a general support. I think everybody can absolutely do with magnesium and um, a probiotic just by way of general life and living, uh, which tends to suck the living daylights out of us just in general. Um, but also magnesium is such an amazing nutrient that we don't necessarily, we can't get from our um, soil and our food anymore. We've sterilized our soils, unfortunately. And magnesium is such a circuit breaker for stress. It helps you to sleep. It helps with your muscles. It helps with pain. Um, If you're experiencing um, headaches or period pain or tummy pain, or even things like coughing, it's a relaxant. So it will help you if you have a cough. Um, So for me, the Fem Essentials is just a multivitamin, multimineral to add that little extra layer on things. And so this to me is just like the ultimate feel good bundle um, just to really help to pep things right up. If you're feeling a bit sluggish, this can be um, just something that we put together that we want to continue to help to nurture you that little bit more. Now there's that quote again, change your clothes and change your life. But Miranda, did you have, I'm going to stop this um, presentation now and just bring us both back up on the screen again. But I'm sure people have questions, but not only that, you've explained these various types that we've looked at. Mm -hmm. What else do people need to know? Really, I think it all stems down to how you're treating yourself. I put a quote up the other day and I've never received so many comments and it was put yourself at the top of your to-do list and everybody was commenting, oh, I don't do that. I never do that. But if we don't put ourselves at the top of our to-do list, things just spiral out of control. Um, but also when you have a wardrobe with intention, then you have your go-tos as you spoke about, then you can have things to lift your mood, which are brighter colors, that's what I wear. Um, and then if you're going into, you know, autumn winter phase then you can have the luxurious fabrics like those beautiful cashmeres and cozy fabrics and you can really get in tune with how you're feeling but that's the thing that you need to get in tune with how you're feeling and that is by slowing down so creating a wardrobe with intention I think one more thing that would be useful for everybody to just have a really good grasp on is also whether they are cool or warm and then we can talk through the the wardrobe with intention and what you know how we we would do that but you want to just go back to explain colors yeah so I keep it really simple there's some other people that like to do it as the seasons like we just spoke about but I keep it super duper simple my mum was a beauty consultant she used to put the big things of fabric over me and You know, there's a blue tone, which is cool, which is really easy. Blue tone is cool. And then the warm is like your red and orange tones, which I'm a cool and that's a warm. So um, we found that out by putting different colors on you. It was very, very clear that you were. You can be 
a mixture of both sometimes and you can wear like something that completely is outside the box because it makes your skin glow so i've got a another sure fire winner if it makes your skin glow or if it makes your skin dull so if it's making your skin dull you know that that's not your tone so you know that that's not the cool or the warm tone you don't have to take around those little sachets of all the colors it's very easy to put something up against you like this isn't my it, it's a cool tone of this color but it's not usually my color so what i do is i zhuzh up my makeup i have to wear more makeup if i want to wear this color my colors are you know um fuchsia pink the beautiful royal blue and emerald green like those jewel tones that's like the cool tones and so is it a matter of people just holding up those colors to be able yeah, to work out pretty easily which color suits them best yeah it's it's really simple once you get into the hang of it and i'm very happy to educate you but once you get into the hang of it you can sort of know okay yep yeah, that's my color that's not my color and you can real, and it's actually quite funny when you figure it out because you're like, oh my gosh, I've been wearing the wrong colours. Right. Mm. And so also with that, so you've said that if you were to wear being, it, it, does it make a difference if you're cool or warm? Mm. And so say you've said, all right, if I wear this colour and it doesn't suit me and you're cool, you need more makeup. Would the same be said to me wearing something that was, uh, sorry, I'm trying to, put it the other way around okay. <laughs> so if I was to wear or you were to wear something uh say you were what am I trying to say say you were cool but you wore something that was warm yeah it works in reverse yes that's yeah. what I'm trying to say yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm. like you can still have a blue tone red so I could still wear that but there's also like you know a red tone and mm -hmm. an orange tone of red you know, like when there's a blue tone red in a nail polish or in a lipstick, you can tell it's darker and it's a bit crisper. And then in the orange tone, it's very warm. It's, it's, it's funny to know the terms because it looks like warmer and it looks cooler. Mm -hmm. Even when you filter a photo in the blue tone or in the orange tone, it's like a cool and a warm tone. Love that. And so then if we know that we're cool or warm and then we know our shape and what suits us best, we can start to then, as you said, shop with intention, knowing what it is that suits us best. That's right. And so also is there, um, is there staple things that you think everybody should start with? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> Um, a white t-shirt, a white button up shirt, which I was going to wear today, but I wanted to be a bit more fancy. So I wore this one for you ladies. Um, a blazer, a beautiful pair of pants, whatever that looks like for your shape. It doesn't have to be the wide leg pan that everybody's doing. I can do that because I'm taller and I've got longer legs. So I can, I can handle this extra fabric. Um, if you're more petite, you'd have to really play around with it. I think we did that with your wardrobe, you know. Um, a shirt dress is a really beautiful staple. I think any height, any shape can wear a shirt dress. Um, a beautiful skirt, whether that's a pencil skirt or whether that's a, a full maxi tiered skirt. Um, I just think that's really beautiful to sort of feel feminine when you're feeling really feminine and you're ovulating. I think that's a really nice thing. Like today I'm, I am in my ovulation phase um, and I wanted to wear like a really feminine flowy dress and that's what I wore today. And it was raining and I just put trainers on with it and a comfy cardigan over the top, but I felt feminine. Um, any other staples? Your classic suit, you can't really go wrong. And then as you say, you mix and match the pieces. You don't have to wear the suit together, but when you're ovulating, like go for it and wear the power suit. Um, a beautiful pair of jeans for your body shape. It doesn't need to be the trend of the moment. It doesn't need to be these high-waisted wide leg jeans. 
Um, I tried a pair on the other day and it just wasn't the right cut for me and I've got longer legs. So, so really with on. that in mind and speaking of the four mm. different types, let's talk about jeans because I think that's such a, a yeah. if you can nail the jeans, a white shirt and a jacket, you're good. Like, <laughs> you've got the um, and then you've got the skirt to mix and match with that. Like, you know, and you're cutting and you're off you go. So going through those, um, let's talk about them. I've got to remember what the first one was again. It was um, curvy. So like the hourglass. Yes. So I would suggest depending, everyone's an individual. So it's not just into one box. We just wanted to keep it simple uh curvy if you embrace your curves go for your skinny jean they're all at the ankle point at the moment so they're showing off just a little bit of the ankle which is really nice which will sort of balance out your curves a little bit if you don't love it you want to diminish i always talk about enhance diminish or opposite if you want to diminish those curves wear the wider leg they're almost like a flare. There were some flares at H&M today, a high-waisted flare that will balance out the curves on top and diminish the curves on the bottom. What was the next one? Um, straight up and down. Mm -hmm. So for this one, you could wear either depending on your comfort level. Um, I would really suggest like for a really chic look, like a straight leg. Yeah. If you want to bring like a bit more curves to you, if you're really straight up and down, you can wear something with, um, you know, a higher waist, then drawing attention to the waist, a more fitted top, and you could wear like a slim to a straight leg jean. I don't remember the next one. I'm relying yeah. on you to tell us. <laughs> I've got it all written down in my pad here. I'm so old school. <laughs> I'm glad I can. I can go back and find it if we need. No, top heavy. Mm -hmm. Top heavy, same thing. If you love your curves and you've got those Kardashian curves and you want to show it off like Chloe, she like enhances both bits. That's not what I recommend. But if you're top heavy, wear the wear the real skinny jean. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're top heavy also, like wearing that wide leg jean could look really beautiful and like a little bit more elegant. When you enhance, enhance, it does, even if you've got the most beautiful body, you're just showing it all. Like when you keep a mystery about one part of your body, it just looks classier and a bit more elegant. Yeah. Perfect. And then and what do we got left? Heavy. Bottom heavy. Sorry, I spoke over the top of you. That's okay. Um, bottom heavy, same thing. Like they're all very similar, but you just tweak it as we did with you. We can just tweak things by um, adjusting the length, like doing that. But So for someone who was shorter, yes. would you have, you want to give the illusion of a longer leg? Yes. Right. Yeah. So like a high-waisted, long, wide leg pant would look amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're detracting from the big, beautiful booty. Whereas if you want to show it off, well, then you show it off in a skinny jean. Mm -hmm. And then what about a belt? Uh, belt for jeans. Does everybody I need a belt? Everybody needs a belt, but I think it's more so, and I forgot to add one staple, a beautiful dress. Right. So whether that is the knitted dress that everyone's sort of going through right now or just a beautiful, like, V-neck, floaty dress, um, that's a real staple in your wardrobe. And when they are floaty, and they're overwhelming in fabric, that's when you get a belt and you cinch that waist in and you show some shape. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, before we start to answer some questions, is there anything else that we need to cover? 
I really think if you are preparing yourself for the next day, the night before, you're on a winner. Like I put out my, I like to get up really early if any of you are following me, like I'm getting up five o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning. I like to go out the back of where I live right now and look at the sunrise. And that's like a really beautiful part of my day. But if I'm not ready, five o'clock in the morning, I'm a bit groggy and it's not all sitting there. I don't get out and do what I need to do. It's just like setting you up for success. So getting that organized in the morning, but then I think also having these staple combos yeah. you've mentioned that really work yeah. um, does really help us to, what about also before we do that? I know that you set aside different items of clothing for work and for play. Yes, I do. Yeah. I have like a styling uniform. So you would have seen me, I think on your podcast and a few other things in this shirt, it's a set. So I change it up and then sometimes I wear it together, but I've got about eight to 10 pieces that are my styling uniform. It's mainly all pants and shirts and camis but I've thrown two skirts in as well if I'm feeling really feminine. And so you'll reserve that wardrobe for work. Yeah. And then I don't usually wear that out to play because I want to feel special and I don't want to feel like I'm in my work uniform, even though my work uniform is beautiful. Um, I think I have worn this shirt out once and I felt quite nice, but I just wore it with a sexier cami underneath and some really tight jeans and a heel. Mm -hmm. So very different to like what I'm wearing right now. Right, right. Um, And one more thing, let's just circle back before we do open up for questions, just to this shopping with intention. So Mm -hmm. can you just explain again now that we've gone through the different types, colours, various lengths and and, uh, cuts of jeans and whatever, Mm -hmm. um, how do we shop with intention knowing these things? So if you know those things and like when you do a wardrobe cleanse with me, it's an education process, as you know, so you would actually be able to go and shop on your own or otherwise, if you still need my guidance, I'm there with you. I can go and do a virtual shop with you, but it's figuring out what you have in your wardrobe and what are the missing pieces instead of just going and buying those fast fashion pieces, as we've spoken about that we're just buying it, oh, it's only $30. It's like, who cares? It's $30 that could go towards an investment piece that you're going to love and you're going to have forever and it's going to be a love piece and a forever piece. The love pieces and forever pieces are building your intentional wardrobe. And so, again, is there something that we could do at the point of purchasing to to help us to be more shop with more intent like is there something that we could actually say or do or um visit yeah you could say um do I think I need this or do I really need this and what are three items that it can go back with Mm. Mm -hmm. I think that's important what are three items that it can go with and also one of the other things that you had talked about was um room in your wardrobe for more items yeah like clearing out the stuff that doesn't look good on you why is it in there why does it have a a space i'm holding on to it waiting for a rainy day that it works all of a sudden yeah (laughs) (laughs) we're gonna get to size now okay let me my passion's gonna come out now if you're holding on to stuff that doesn't fit you in your wardrobe it's damaging to your self-esteem Every time you go past that, that doesn't fit me, that doesn't fit me, that doesn't fit me. How is that good for your psyche? Whereas if you clear it out, it's gone, it's cleansed, it's thank you, you can go to a good new home. You've got that space and that clarity in your wardrobe to then buy that piece in a size that fits you. Yeah? Yes. (laughs) I know I love this I always because I have patients that constantly say oh um I'm not buying new jeans until 
It's like um, buy the damn jeans now. Buy the jeans now. Because yes. you, A, you can't walk around naked. No. B, you're probably wearing something that doesn't suit you and you feel yeah. yucky. Yeah. But C, you might not ever get to that point and maybe you don't need to. Um, but I do see this a lot. It's like, oh, I'm waiting to buy the jeans for that. It's like mm-hmm. buy the jeans now. Buy the jeans. Watch what happens. Embrace the size you are now. Embrace the shape you are now. Embrace the woman you are now. Well, just learn how to feel good with where you're at right now. Yeah. I think that's the main thing. Yeah. It's like where you're at right now. so hard on themselves. We and are really hard on ourselves. Yeah. And I think there is a blockage there and we're talking about blockage and I think there is a blockage with women embracing where they are at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, two more things. Go for it. Also, when you are buying a new item, you talk about letting go of an item. Yes, please. Like if you are going to go and shop and you're trying to upgrade something, up-level something, fantastic, but then let go of something that's in your closet that's starting to fade, that's starting to get holes in it, that's starting to peel, those things need to go. So, you know, you're really getting to a place where you've got what works for you and then you get to rotate or purchase. Like once yeah. something is finished, loved, worn to death, yes. it's not actually good anymore. I've got a few things like that at the moment. Yeah. I just love them though, you know. Um, then I can replace them and then let go. And I think energetically that's very important too. You didn't show me those, did you? <laughs> What's that? You didn't show me those love no, I did. I've got just a couple of T-shirts that have got holes in them and I oh, love the T-shirts. Fine. T-shirts and loungewear, I'm like. Yeah, but I wear them all the time. Wear so whatever, like, but wear it and does the ones with holes in it make you feel good? Yeah, I do. I love it. See? Well, that's okay. Well, it's also a really expensive T-shirt. So oh. now the holes actually just look like they were supposed to be there. Finally, before we um, go to Q&A, yes. just this self-love piece I think is really important mm-hmm. because we've talked about how you, you're, you know, you when you show up and you give yourself the gift of caring for yourself Mm -hmm. it's just such a game changer as to how you exist in the world how you nurture other people how you go about your day how you feel throughout the day like I think this is really just the icing on the cake and Miranda and I have been quite perplexed about how many people have found the idea of this masterclass indulgent and I'm like oh wow we've got a long way to go so kudos to you for that that are here because yeah, I wanted to say that at the beginning and I totally forgot. Say it now. Thank you to every single person who's here. And I've spoken to lots of people just messaging them, welcoming them to the Style by Miranda community. And they were all like, I'm going to watch the replay. I'm going to watch the replay. I can't watch it tonight. Mm-hmm. Like kudos to you women for honouring yourself and investing in yourself and being here tonight. Like okay. that's everything. So Miranda and I, oh, did you have something else to say there? No, I just said that's the first step. Amazing. It is the first step. Absolutely. Now, clearly you and I can talk underwater, but we want to open it up to (laughs) Q&A. So we've got two ways of doing this. I mean, I really, really would invite anyone that wants to raise their hand and actually ask the question in real time, please feel free to go ahead and do that. If that's not your vibe tonight, that's okay. You can pop it in the chat. We've got a few there already. Although if anyone has asked that question and you do want to ask it in real time, feel free to raise your hand or just to unmute yourself and um, and go for it. Um, I will ask this question on Suze's behalf. When clinching, is the size of the belt significant? Yeah, it is when it's in the middle of the waist. So when you're cinching in a dress, it's, it's extremely significant. It should just be one of those tiny little belts that have just a little gold or silver clasp in the middle that are just really elegant and it doesn't have a huge amount of the belt hanging over. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not your jeans belt that goes through the loops and is thicker. It's a real thin, elegant belt to just cinch in. If it's a lot of fabric, you can do a thicker belt like we did with you, a thicker leather belt because fabric belts never work. I love belts. I got one for my birthday yesterday, actually. 
thank you. See you over Instagram, but anyway. Oh, thank you. All right, I'm going to start to read these questions. I don't feel like anyone's brave enough to ask. We're clearly scary. Um, I feel like I need a couple of wardrobes. One of, hang on. I feel like I need a couple wardrobes, one of one size and mm-hmm. another full of the neck size because when I fluctuate weight wise, it happens really fast. And then I feel like a nudist. <laughs> right. So you can have like a couple of pieces. What I was talking about before is if you're a size six, you know, you, you, you were a size six and now you're a size 10 and you're holding on to those sixes. That's when I think it can be quite damaging for the yes. self-esteem. Um, but I understand just one size. I've got things that are one size. I'm an eight to 10. So I've got size 10 and I've got size eight, but I'm selling off a lot of my size six stuff now because cleanse, clear, make space for the eight and 10 that I am now, Miss Perimenopause. You know, I'm changing. Also, um, I want to say that, as I mentioned, we fluctuate all cycle. Mm. And so this is what I'm talking about in terms of where you're at in your cycle and knowing what suits and fits you. Um, be really aware of that and just have it's absolutely no use for me you know just before my period arrives to try and wear my regular jeans they just don't feel nice so why do that to myself like just don't need to do it now that I know that but once upon a time I would have tried to just persevere and what happens is I would end up leaving the house I would feel uncomfortable Mm -hmm. I would I mean there's nothing worse there's I feel like there's literally nothing worse than leaving the house feeling uncomfortable. I agree with you. And that's what I meant by shopping with intention, because if you're wearing clothing that you know looks good, that you know suits your skin tone, you're going to walk out feeling like a million dollars. And that is going to translate to everything you do in your day. I love it. Okay. Natalie says, I buy lots of pieces for my weekend wardrobe. And when I dress up, I feel good, but I don't really buy many pieces for work and it makes me feel rubbish. I find the things I enjoy wearing aren't things that are appropriate for my work. Also, I'm on a weight loss journey and worry to invest too much on pieces whilst the size is changing. Mm. I mean, a lot in her weekend, but not in her work. We still need to feel good while we're working. Like just invest in just some nice chic pieces, like a beautiful blazer or something. It could make a t-shirt and jeans look dressy just by like one investment piece. I had on a pair of jeans, a white t-shirt and a blazer, and I was in Mecca the other week. And this woman comes up to me, she's like, oh my gosh, your outfit. And I'm like, I am in jeans and a t-shirt. See what I mean? By just one little just outfit. yeah. Little so here's what I would say to that as well. You spend far more time. I would imagine if you're working Monday to Friday, you spend far more time at work than what you do on the weekend. Yeah. And I wonder, even if you had, and you slowly, you know, things like a nice t-shirt mm-hmm. will probably fit you across several sizes. I would imagine, unless you're buying it tight beautiful shirt too and a beautiful shirt will fit you across a few sizes this is where I love the sets I feel like the sets actually really work in this scenario because again a lot of them that are in at the moment are you know a a stretchy waist um and so that's where I feel like that would be really appropriate as well and if you did lose weight um then uh, and that's what you're trying to achieve then it's still going to fit you but if you don't then it's you're still going to feel good and so you know, there's ebbs and flows. Weight loss journeys are, are a commitment and um, and we still want you to feel good along the way. So this is where I would really encourage you, don't wait until because you need to feel, I think by feeling good along the way, then you're probably even more likely to get to where you want to go. Yes. And one piece, um, just to add to that for you, Natalie, um, I just bought my girlfriend a dad shirt. They're from Cotton On, they're $40. They're on my white shirt shoppable mood board. That's just on my page. Um, She went from a size six to an eight after having a hysterectomy to now she's a 10 to 12. So wearing that dad shirt, you can still wear it. You can still feel amazing 
but it's not clinging anywhere. It's just showing your silhouette. And that's one trend that I think is something that all of us could embrace. Maybe besides my other gorgeous friend, Natalie, who's very petite, she'd need something a little bit more fitted. Like you can always tie a shirt in any way. Frame. You can always tie it, but a dad shirt is really big. Big. So I've got see. a way that you can tie it, that it looks neat. But I will share that with people who decide to come and work with me. <laughs> um, any other tips for shorties? I'm five foot and really struggle to find clothes that aren't too long in the legs or sleeves. Yes. So um, as I do in like wardrobe cleansers, we literally take things to an alterationist and we can alter the sleeve length. We can alter the jeans length and the, um, the length of a skirt, the length of a um, jeans. But it is, there are petite fashion stores and there are petite labels. And I think that's the way to go. Like I think in David Jones's petite labels, in Forever New, there is an actual petite range. Mm. Um, I had a beautiful client. I don't know if this is her asking me a question. Maybe it is. Um, and we haven't gone on our style session yet, but I have taken a lady who's 151 centimetres and we went to Dotty Glassons and Forever New and we got her, sometimes you have to shop in the children's section, the petite section, we just do what we have to do. Mm. But we got her beautiful, beautiful outfits and she was a young mum, but she was tiny, like 151 centimetres. I have to alter every pant that I own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it drives me insane. And every now and again, I might find a capri like um, length yeah. and I'm like, oh, yeah, that'll work for jeans, full length. That's These are a bit annoying. It is. When you're petite, you're, you spend your life at an It's option. annoying when you've got like a, a lot of pants have a, a finish on the bottom and then you, when you yeah. alter them, they never look the same. Yeah, mm. I love the raw edges because then you can mm. sort of play around. Oh, yeah, I do love that too. Did I answer that question enough? For that so but we can also she can also ask some more questions okay, tips cool. for you know like this one tips for when purchasing bras and underwear and also for buying swimwear for different body shape mm -hmm. so for bras and underwear i've just become a bra fit specialist so you are welcome to hit me up for that um you can have a complimentary like a virtual consultation it um it really depends on what shape you are with what bra is going to suit you. Um, I need a bit more information on that one with the bras. Well, I think also, I mean, I do think it's important. It's worth investing in um, some time with someone to show you that and to fit yeah. you properly. Yeah. I think what's the, I mean, I can't well, I remember this, but the percentage. Fit. Like percent I can learn how to do it virtually now. That's what I just got trained in. The percentage of um, women who wear ill-fitting bras is quite oh, high. It's extremely it's a high. a game changer. That's why I thought I'd add that to my mm, mm. But what about swimwear? Swimwear for different sizes. I mean, you've got. Let's go with the four. Can you suggest? Okay. So I think that's a good go. idea. Um, I think C Folly is a good brand for most sizes. They seem to have everything. Mm. There's another one called Bondi Beyond. Mm. You are both, like both, curvy on both um, sides. So let's ask this question. For somebody that's curvy up top and bottom, yeah. would you have a one-piece or a two-piece? I would have a one piece if you want a classic movie star like Bondi Beyond. Mm. That's what I would sort of go with. But if they're comfortable and they've got, you know, mm -hmm. they're very comfortable. I don't know if they have flat stomach or they don't have a flat stomach. Right. It's hard because, it depends, you know. it Yeah, I know. It's a little bit too. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they could wear a beautiful bikini as well. There's high, There's so many different things around at the moment. You don't need to go for a trend. Just mm -hmm. go for what suits your body shape. But what I about don't know what shape that person is. 
What about if you are bottom heavy? Bottom heavy. Yes. And what about on top? Well, I find, I feel like over time it's taken a really long time for me to work out what actually works. But now I can buy a bikini off the rack without trying it on and people laugh at me. I'm like, because I know what style six. Yeah. So a triangle bikini mm. could suit you. Right? I always buy triangle bikinis because they go. fit and I can I can adjust the sides of them to fit my butt. That's right. <laughs> right? If you're so confident, you could wear the old classic movie stars, the high-waisted. Mm-hmm. With the fuller bottom, yes, and higher waisted, that would look beautiful. So that works for a bottom heavy person. Mm-hmm. What about a top heavy person? Top heavy, they would not probably be wearing the triangle bikini. No, most definitely not. They'd need something with a bit more support, a bit a thicker strap mm-hmm. would hold them up. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a bra mm-hmm. if you're top heavy. It's almost like a bra. So like bikini. an underwire type of yeah. bikini top. Having some support. And then there's the straight up and down person that, straight you know, knock yourself out, mate. But you know what? The triangle doesn't always suit oh, them. really? Okay, they there you go. Need, they need a padded bra style. Mm-hmm. Um, and depending on what their bottom looks like, sometimes they go the high-waisted um, mm. bottom to give them some shape. Mm. By wearing that high-waisted, it gives them some shape. It um, shortens their waist and then they wear something with a bit more padding on top. Perfect. One okay. more thing, um, same, uh, Elena was asking, interesting yep. uh, regarding belts. I never feel comfortable as I feel they draw attention to my waist and exacerbate my tummy. Okay. So I was only suggesting them for specifically for like an overwhelming fabric. Like a, like a maxi dress or something. Yeah, like a maxi dress. Mm-hmm. Um, if she has anything with her tummy, I wouldn't be wearing a belt. But what about wearing the belt higher? You can wear it higher, like underneath the breast line, like just underneath there. Um, I'm thinking you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> underneath here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to circle back because Natalie's also said, which we were talking about before with the work wardrobe as opposed to the yeah. weekend wardrobe, yeah. has said, I work on educational support with special needs kids, so nice clothes don't work. Okay. I'm going to argue that nice clothes can still work. This is, the, it, you know, this is the the shirt and the jeans or the T-shirt and the jeans or the... How can the button up not work for that? Like, I, I feel like that would work. Yeah. We might be missing something though, Natalie. Like we just, I just want to give you ideas of something that could work. Yeah. Um, assuming that you can wear jeans to work or yeah, a pair of. What her role was again for kids. And educational support with special needs kids. Oh, with special needs kids. So then, yeah, you wouldn't want like heaps of fabric because they might pull and do all sorts of things. You probably want to just wear like slim pair of chinos and a beautiful button down shirt. Like you'd feel nice in that mm. rather than a t-shirt and trackies or something. It's just like elevating one of the items will make you feel better. Just ask her if that makes sense for her. We'll I'm happy to elaborate that. more. Oh, she's even said, I love fashion, but my job isn't very glamorous. I'm determined to make this glamorous by the end of this yeah. phone, or this, um, not phone call this session um i live in far north queensland and live in shorts i try to buy dressy shorts i'm short i'm not big on dresses or shirts i do love a pencil skirt though but they aren't every day help on the shorts lol <laughs> well yeah. there's different types of shorts that you can have yeah there's beautiful tailored shorts for petite women mm-hmm. i did buy some for that lady that was 151 centimeters um at the moment, what I, I feel for her, because if she is petite. Oh, no, I don't think she's necessarily petite. Oh, she's not petite? No, she's just I don't think so. Petite. She's shorter? Mm. She says she's shorter? No. Or did I just hear that? Sorry. No. So she Nothing lives in suggest. far north Queensland and she needs shorts. There's heaps of shorts around. There's so many, but they are a bit more oversized. I heard you say petite. Sorry about that. Sorry, no, no, I didn't. Mm. Um, so I mean, there are, yeah, yeah. I love shorts. I wear shorts all the time. Um, all right. How to make the now trendy wide leg jeans work when you have a big tummy. So you don't want to tuck tops in or wear mini tops. 
Mm, don't wear them if they don't suit you. Yeah. This was me. I kept trying to fit into, I just was like, I just want to wear the wide leg and it's like, it doesn't work. No. So I just really have to say, Tina, that I just embraced finally like the tight, the tighter or the skinny leg jeans. Like it took me a long time to be comfortable in that. And I finally did that. And then, oh, guess what? We're changing it again. Thanks very much. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I don't think that they have to, but it could be, uh, it doesn't have to be, a, it can be a, a like a mum jean or something, right? Yeah, it can be a mum jean. Like it doesn't need to grab the tummy. Um, there's even jeans that like what I'm wearing right now, which are like high waisted wide leg pants that might sort of detract from the tummy. And if there's little pleats and things mm -hmm. that could also detract the eye. Um, and then if it is like she wants to wear that style and she's not moving, budging from it, you just wear a darker colour and that diminishes. Uh, yeah, right. There you go. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, shirt dresses for pear shape, yay or nay? If so, where would you recommend to go? Mm. Great question. I have found some shirt dresses at Age or Age, however you like to say it. Um, and they've got a bit more, you know, overwhelming fabric that could sort of balance out depending on what's on top. So like something with a ruffle up here will make the eye go up and then the shirt dress can be sort of a little bit, not more A-line. It depends on how bottom heavy they are. A-line can make you look wider but sometimes a pencil skirt could look beautiful and just bringing the attention up. So like for a shirt dress, it would need to be not your typical classic shirt dress. You'd have to sort of find a little twist on it for your shape. I always put a belt with mine. Yeah, that does look nice, but, but for bottom heavy, that might not always work. A thin one seems to. Mm. No. Um, I love Lozzie said I've definitely shopped in the kids section. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm 154 centimeters. Yeah. Um yeah. when do you tuck in a shirt or leave it out wearing jeans or a pant? When mm -hmm. it's too long. So okay, here we go. We're gonna I'm gonna show you what I'm wearing. So if I was wearing that out, how does that look? It looks lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> there's no shape. There's no nothing. Right. There's no shape to but, it. But when mm -hmm. you tuck it in, and I call it a French tuck, so all my clients that are actually on here today will know all about the French tuck. So it's that and then ruching it out a little bit and then making it square. So now I look like I've actually got a waist, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when it's too long, that's when you tuck it in. Mm -hmm. You tuck it in to give you some shape. When you're looking frumpy, when it's looking, when I call it blousy, blousy, yeah. that's when you tuck in. Because um, this is blousy and that's blousy. Love that. Yeah. We're getting lots of thanks here. Okay, Natalie's come back with some more information. Natalie's our friend that we're trying to, yeah. Um, she said, this is helpful. I can't wear jeans. Okay. Um, I can't wear jeans mm -hmm. and um, mostly wears leggings or some type of fitted pant with a mm -hmm. top or cardi or jacket, but it's the same thing each day and and I feel frumpy. You would feel frumpy because you're wearing leggings and a cardi. Like that's just a real loungewear look. It's not a work look. Can she wear it like a chino? Mm, I feel like she can because it says here mostly wear leggings or some type of fitted pant. So yeah. even a fitted pant with a T-shirt's nice. Yeah. And a pair of like low free type shoes or something. I mean, yeah. look at me go. I know. <laughs> See, I have educated you well, haven't I? <laughs> or a nice sandal, a nice like slide. That yeah. works. A little plain white sneaker, mm -hmm. nondescript, can really just make an outfit look smart with a chino, with a T-shirt, with a button down I shirt. think that what Natalie should do is get 
two or three pairs of chinos and two or three t-shirts and just alternate till your heart's content yeah and then and then have a work uniform that's your work uniform yeah that's your work uniform or your work wardrobe um thanks ladies great advice they always look nice online but i can never make them work maybe i'll go to the op shop i think you're talking about the shirt dress i think that's uh tina let me just see tina was talking about a shirt dress. dress no Oh, no, trendy wide leg jeans. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, trendy wide when leg. you have a big tummy. You can go to the op shop. I got my last you pair of jeans by accident the from the op shop. Yeah, I went to H&M and Cotton On to buy my girlfriend that dad shirt because she's just finished this operation. Mm-hmm. And I want her to feel good now. She's got nothing mm. that fits her. So I'm like a dad shirt tucked into a mum short. It's like a mum denim short. Mum and a dad. There you yeah. go. I know, mum and a dad. Um, with a belt, with the sunglasses, beautiful shoe, and off you go. Perfect. I'll share that image for you tomorrow, actually. Well, send it to us because we can send Correct. it out in the replay email. Do yeah. pleats all gathered around the waist? Hang on. Do pleats all gathered around the waist? Does this trick the eye? Similar to the belt, I've avoided as I feel it added extra bulk to this area. Yes, it's my sensitive area, though I am a size 10. So I mean, can I just say something, sorry, before you answer that? It's interesting about size because it, it's size doesn't even matter when it, when it comes to shape. Like I think, you know, I'm a size 8 to 10, but I'm a top bottom heavy. Mm. Um, it doesn't, the size doesn't matter so much when I'm dressing. I still need to dress to suit my body shape, right? Correct. Mm. I'm an 8 to 10. We're totally opposite shapes. Completely different. Same mm-hmm. size. Yeah. Fascinating. So, so sorry, please answer that question about depletes or gathered so, around the waist, trick the eye. Gathered around the waist and the, her tummy is a sensitive area. Mm. I, wouldn't be I don't know that we, Elena, had uh, said that, but let me see. Please. Mm. Oh, yes, she said that, uh, yes, it was, uh, Elena was the one also asking about the belts and drawing attention to her tummy. Yes. Yeah. So I wouldn't be adding pleats. It does add. It's more... Like I would put a pleated skirt on the straight up and down. Yeah, I can't wear a pleated skirt. I look ridiculous. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, do and you what? advise the rule of one thirds? Did she say pin tucks for the skirt as well? And she said pleats and then she said pin tucks. Pin tucks would also add bulk to that area. So she's actually on the money. Okay. Yeah. And she said, do you advise the rule of thirds? One third, one thirds. I don't know what that means. In colours? Does know. she mean like, you know, never wear more than three colours? I don't know. So Maybe she can she can help us understand that more. Please. Yeah. Um, I think, I oh, know Natalie was saying that um, the accessories and chinos are great tips. Oh, good. Love it. We're at, we've gotten through all the questions unless um, Elena wants to um, just elaborate on the rule of thirds. Whilst she's doing that, I'm just going to let everybody know. So Miranda has um, kindly kept aside two weeks in her calendar for us. Um, If you do want to um, dive in deeper with her and um, book a one-on-one session and Miranda, did you all, which we will send out links for this tomorrow. Um, Did you also have something for the first one or two people that book? Yes, I do. I've got a beautiful um, bonus prize for the first person. Um, It's like a beauty pack from Skin Juice. Beautiful. Uh, They're like I wear their um, vitamin A and C moisturiser and I always get told that my skin's just glowing. Beautiful. So it's a very nice um, compliment. And then for the second person that books, um, they're going to get a shoppable mood board. Amazing. And yeah. I, uh, Courtney can and also. By the way, they can, if the first person that books wants a shoppable mood board. Okay. Well, first in, first, get, first gets the first bits. Now, yeah. also, there's a few more here. Elena has come back. And so, anyway, we will send that out. But also, you can contact Miranda through um, Courtney shared her um, links here. And oh, there you go. Book a discovery call. There you go. Um, thirds, breaking down the body, say one third on the top, two thirds on the bottom to balance rather than 50 50. Sorry if that makes no sense. So, book it. Do so would it be third on the top um, two, and two thirds on the bottom? Is that what she's saying? Third on the top, two thirds on the bottom. Mm. 
Just repeat the question to me one more time. Breaking down the body, say one third on the top, two thirds on the bottom for balance rather than 50-50. I would imagine thirds being on the height. one, two, three. Yeah, depending on the height. But we do tend to do that. We, like my, what I'm wearing today would be one third. So mm-hmm. this cami is one third and then the wide legged high-waisted pants are two thirds, mm-hmm. but bringing this shirt down balances me out. Right. Because it's hanging lower than mm-hmm. my waist. So it balances out that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that I'm make just sense? looking at the questions. It does make sense. Sorry, I'm paying attention. <laughs> um, any tips to find nice denim shorts and where to buy them this season? Denim shorts are tricky to buy. They are. Depending I found on what um, shorts you want, number one is the first question. If somebody wants to DM me, I'm happy to have a little browse for them. Mm-hmm. But it depends on their shape. It depends mm-hmm. on their legs it depends on everything like I can't right. it's not a block it's like jeans it's right. very individual it's very specific mm-hmm. okay and mm-hmm. I think we've got one more question here one more comment and then I think we're good thanks so much for your tips and advice Nat and Miranda found this last class really helpful I'm going to put your suggestions in place tomorrow that was from Natalie thank you yes thank you. We've solved her wardrobe challenges. I love that. Um, you will be able to access the replay. So if this is, um, if you're watching it in real time, um, Courtney's also shared the PDF. So the um, four types that Miranda spoke about and those tips that are appropriate. Um, hopefully this has been useful for everybody. Um, don't hesitate to also check out Miranda's Instagram. And Courtney's also shared her um, Pinterest um, handle so go ahead check that out um, oh she's put a follow that as well because good times thanks court um, so I think I think with that thank you so much Miranda for sharing all of your wisdom this has been um, I think it's I think it's awesome and I think at the end of the day we we do want people to leave the house feeling good we do we deserve to feel good and it really does help us to show up um, authentically in the world and and you know have purpose and intention and how we actually put ourselves out there so thank you so much everybody for joining i hope you enjoy the rest of your evening um and until next time we can say goodbye see you guys bye i don't have any music to play because i wasn't just here we go here we go